In tonight's Eye on America, an unusual brand of gang violence. Salt Lake City Detective Brent Larson says there's a troubling dark side to all of this clean living. Some straight edgers have gone over the edge into violence. More extreme straight edgers have been identified in a series of arson fires and fire bombing. I think they're a terrorist group. I don't see much difference from them and the group that bombed Oklahoma City. The straight edgers' philosophy is they don't drink, they don't smoke, and they don't do drugs, but they're going to beat up any kids they see doing Domestic that. Domestic terrorism unit from the FBI is here indefinitely, carefully watching over this clean living crusade that's going to rise. Going away. They shouldn't be hurting me by taking something that I feel really strongly about and I hold very dear and exploiting it and throwing it all over the media and making me look like I'm a fucking criminal because I don't want to destroy myself. straight edge back in the day when I was like 14 years old. I used to skate a lot. I used to listen to a lot of hardcore. It's kind of how I got into it was like through skateboarding. Being straight edge is staying away from addiction. It's a lifetime commitment to abstain from anything that you see as poisonous. Basically, it comes down to drugs and alcohol. My commitment to straight edge isn't so my friends will think I'm cool. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And it's because of my feelings I have towards drugs and alcohol, not because I have some strong feeling for straight edge itself because I've said this before, man. I probably won't be 40 years old and say, God, I'm nailed to the X, you know? I'm straight edge, but I'll always have X's tattooed on my body. They're a constant reminder of the feelings and the convictions that I have. Basically, there was punk rock. There was a lot of drug use, a lot of alcoholism. Well, the band Minor Threat did the song Straight Edge, and they were a straight punk band, but they were talking about not doing drugs and kind of like glorifying the fact that they didn't do drugs and that they didn't drink and that they didn't have sex. Kind of like to show kids that, that you can be punk rock and not be fucked up. And then Straight Edge blew up again with the band Earth Crisis. They came out and they did the Firestorm 7-inch and it came across and the music was different than it was before. It was like a totally different style of music, but they were you know, screaming about being Straight Edge again. <laughs> Hardcore is too heavy to be called punk rock, but not heavy enough to be called heavy metal. That kind of defines like the traditional style of hardcore. It doesn't really necessarily reflect the music style itself, but more the lifestyle and more the heart that, that is in it. We'll go on tour with no money in our pockets and come home like owing money and play shows for like 20 kids and get like $30. We played in Chicago and they didn't even pay us, you know, and no one even bought anything from us because there wasn't even anyone there. That's hardcore, you know, trying to just play shows because you love the kids and because you love the music, because you, you have the heart to, to go do it.
Well, I mean, like, right here's Matt Bolton. Gabe. Frank. Yeah. So, Frank, what's it like living with a, a house full of three of those kids? Um, I don't know. No different, I guess, just living with a bunch of drunks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I give them more shit for, like, not eating meat and drinking than they do for me eating meat and drinking. I guess, according to the media, they're supposed to be more militant, you know, but they seem to be pretty nice to me. John, does it bother you at all that the Frank's not straight edge? Um, no, there's nothing at all to complain about Frank. So if he gets pissed at me when I wear my shoes on in the house, that's the only thing I complain about. So Rachel, you don't live here, right? No. So what are you doing here? Um, hanging out with Sean and all these kids because they're my friends. They're your friends. How'd you meet them? Um, just going to shows and stuff. Cool. Are you straight edge? No. Why not? Because I like to drink and I smoke. <laughs> Does Sean give you any crap about that? No, not at all. If straight edge kids are supposed to be as bad as everyone says they are, like, why would they date girls or, you know, anyone that drinks, you know, have to tolerate them around them? I think it's pretty funny, though. Have you, know, have you guys ever gotten any crap from any straight edge kids at all for drinking or smoking? Or <coughs> mm, I can't say no. <laughs> I think I get more pressure from people that are like, well, how come you don't smoke pot, or how come you don't do acid? I'm like, well, I just kind of drink beer, you know? And I think people are weird about that. I look at it like this. For me, straight edge kind of became, it was kind of like the building block of everything that I believe in now. It, it, it showed me that I didn't, you know, it kind of helped me to question things rather than just assume or take somebody else's word for it, to look into things. And I look at it as, I am personally straight edge mainly for the thing that I, obviously, I would consider myself a revolutionary, and I think it's essential. Your mind is your most powerful tool, tool, and I think it's essential to keep a clean mind free of poisons and toxins and not to be held down by anything whatsoever. Tell me what happened at the Fur Breeders Co-op. Um, it, the Fur Breeders Co-op, the office building. The bombing, yeah. Yeah, at the Fur Breeders Co-op bombing, the office building in the, uh, I do believe five or six of the meat trucks got blown up. They're the meat trucks, not the meat trucks, excuse me. Were you involved with that? Um, yes, I was. And uh, have you been, what, have you had any legal repercussions? Um, I'm going to be doing 35 years in prison because of that. You can't even associate um, a few kids, a handful of kids only with an entire group. Straight edge to me is a truth to yourself, something you take in yourself very personally. I became vegetarian because it was the cool thing. <laughs> I never really understood it. And then I started to study it. And veganism was like the only way I saw it to be. Because vegetarians kind of half assed don't eat meat, you don't eat dairy, you don't buy animal products whatsoever. I mean, you have no affiliation with that industry. It doesn't make sense when kids are vegan straight edge and then they're violent, because that completely opposes the entire idea of being a compassionate being. I do things more from a, a different cause. Like, I'll use my artwork. I did a big animal rights kind of series most people don't understand what this means at all. It just exemplifies the pain. This is part of a series about women in disorders. A lot of people are turned off of, by this. Women are seen in this world as objects, more or less. And this is kind of more of a, a rebirth of not wanting to participate in things that women go to to look like, you know, that perfect Barbie doll. Especially at my age, that's what most girls are faced with. I was bulimic for a while, but I don't really think it has any correlation with straight edge or veganism. If anything, those two things have brought me up out of it, especially the straight edge affiliation with people. The most positive thing I've ever gotten into, the kids that have become my friends because of the scene have been the best friends I've ever had in my entire life because they're just so positive and pro-person.
I've never gotten any any flack from the straight edge kids because I'm not. I think most straight edge kids are just live and let live. My band doesn't care that I drink and smoke. Everyone else but me is straight edge, but we're all different people. <laughs> Usually my lyrics are about my own personal shortcomings, which are plenty. You know, failed relationships with people, how lame, how apathetic I usually am. It's very therapeutic. Don't listen to hardcore or straight edge music at all in my personal life. It's aggressive, it's, it's kind of angry, and there's never a time in my life when I want to hear that. Live, it's, it's perfect, because you're right there, you can dance, you can get it all out, and it's an appropriate environment for that. I stick up for straight edge and the ideals of it uh, quite often. I think ideally it's good. I think it's a good, positive way to live your life. The only negative thing is the violence involved. We don't have too many chances left to keep it going. If we ruin it, we're going to ruin it forever. It's not that hard to break up a fight at all. Just jump in and hold them back, and they'll cool off in a minute or two. For me, hardcore music is a, a suppression and an aggression. It's a venting. Where the violence uproots within that is from an unfamiliar source, usually. When a kid would come into the scene and get into the dance and then not know what's going on and being confused and being hit and then getting mad that that happened because they're unfamiliar with what goes on. We're all just venting, trying to be heard. Josh and I have been friends for so long, you know, it's going on well close to three years, we've been pretty close, and so it's it's hard to say because I give him all my respect for standing up for what he believes in and doing the things that he feels to be to be true and feel, doing the things that he he thinks to be right, you know. And so it's hard to say that, you know, put any kind of blame on him because I don't. I don't I, I don't blame Josh. What I do blame is like what we were talking about before is like I blame I blame, you know, the media for distorting it and, and, and not making it a point to distinguish between the two and not, you know, because it's making me look like, it's making me look like, um, you know, in a sense, I was part of what Josh did, which obviously I wasn't, and obviously I wouldn't have had any part in doing it. Yeah, don't judge him based on my action. It wasn't because I was straight edge that I did the things that I did. It was because of my beliefs with veganism. Are you going to miss him while he's in prison, Sean? Oh, fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm losing a friend. I'm losing a friend, but uh, at the same time, I'm not losing a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll always be friends, but, I mean, I, will not, I won't be able to see him. You know what I'm saying? I won't be able to see him as much. He'll be gone. I'll be in another state, and to see him, I'll have to go there. You know what I mean? And, but he's, he's going to prison not because he fucking 
like murdered people or like or or hurt people or even like stole or did anything like that I would personally consider like true true like real hard crimes and he's getting maximum penalty even now being faced with 35 years in prison he doesn't regret and that takes fucking courage and that takes a fuck and that deserves respect because he's going on on his heart he's following his heart and doing something that he feels to be true I'll miss my friend I'll fucking miss him a lot but he you know I mean he's he's going he's going to prison because he's he's following his heart he's being true to himself and he's he's trying to make he was trying to make a change in this world 